Tell me this is not the last time we'll be watching this opening for eight years. This show came out of nowhere, but it's been amazing. Hopefully the production timeline does not match Freerin's timeline, the character. Somebody remind them that humans' lives are short and that we need more Freerin. Freerin, episode 28. Final episode of season one. Really curious to see if Dengen passes. Dengen better pass. My guess is that she's passing people, or she likes people that she wants to use. She wants to mold them in some, some way that she determines. Towards some goal that she wants. Maybe there's an element of control in it? If magic is something like, I don't know, a, a broader spirit of life and its beauty and imagination, potential, then it will be constantly moving and changing in ways that you cannot possibly grasp. It's bigger than you. And as someone who's devoted yourself to it, as someone whose sense of self-worth and identity is linked to the mastery of it, that can be painful. So it's a very natural response to want to clamp down on the thing, try to make it more about you than it really is. Imagine that you have some leverage over it more than you actually do, because those things can be comforting. This taps into some of the broader themes in the show I think. The question of will you be remembered? What is the value of yourself and your name? The fact that all things fade, that we are relatively small in a certain sense. Looking for the cure to that existential pain of feeling irrelevant, feeling small. The minusculeness of humanity and elves for that matter, no matter how long they live, in the scope of all things that are, all things that have been, all things that will be. These are very innocuous examples, but you see this in things like musical gatekeeping. The music is me, the band is me, I must be acknowledged along with the band. And maybe the answer is somewhere in there. You know, like one's appreciation of music is a beautiful thing. It's like a connection with something bigger than yourself. And so for a second you are that big in a way, but you can't try to control that or possess it. It just is what it is. And I think Freerin are the people who really understand magic the way the show's putting magic forward. It's not something meant to be controlled, it's something meant to be shared, and that's sort of the beauty of it. It's a gift to be able to participate in that at all. This is a guess, but Siri might just be magically gatekeeping. She sees the change, she sees what's happening, but if it's gonna change, she can try to make it on her terms, put herself at the top of it, put people in place that will share her values or be in service to her. Ooh. Siri always charming and full of praise. Oh, twist. No, 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 roll with it. That's good. It helps you. She wants you to think that. I want to believe I would pass. Pass. Oh, pass. Pass. She beat... Yeah. I saw what you did to sense. It was horrifying and amazing. She's definitely thinking about how she can beat Siri. <laughs> Siri cuts. Oh. It's not him. He was never even here. We don't know how many copies he can make. This is uh, very Nen-like. You don't want to reveal the full extent of your power. It gives you an edge. If people believe there's a real one present, they let their guard down a little bit. Is it though? Yeah, <laughs> that's clever, but she can see through it. That is really nice. All right, he might get why he would do all this for the exam. He's got no no stakes, really. Oh, he, he passes. He passes. He's got something. Pass. <laughs> she loved that. <laughs> that was like in a dating sim, that was the, the A plus answer. Full meter. Fail. <laughs> a lot of passes this year. Sorry. I need your power. Also, maybe I love you? For your power. I need your power. It will look like love until I get your power. Then, once I've got what I've needed, I move on to the next victim. Mm. <laughs> okay, that was a bigger reaction than I expected. Yeah, I was just thinking, Siri mentioned the bumper crop. Obviously, Freer and Infern helped a lot of people pass the trials, but I think it's more than that too. She just raised the bar. This is kind of tough to escape, which is why I think it's important to pay attention to. The environment a person is in plays more of a role in how the person behaves than we usually think or want to believe. Unless you're really, really clear on, on things, being in an environment with lower achieving people will typically lead lower yield for yourself and vice versa. <laughs> That means more to him than any magic spell. Wait, 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 what magic spell are they gonna get? I must, I must have missed something. When does that happen? Oh, here it is. It's big. Oh, cookies. Much bigger, more important. He, he really is getting around by supplying her with constant supply of sweets. Is politics really this easy? Maybe I should consider it. Cookies for all. Oh. 
Can I count on your vote in September? This is comfortable. Oh yeah, <laughs> he doesn't know. He wasn't on this arc. Big whoop. Oh, it is a big whoop. This, for me, this is what makes Thinking respectable. Not his status or title. Okay, Thinking is probably the character in the show that has grown the most on me from introduction to present. He just seems like a genuinely good dude. He seems a little bit lonely. He's introduced as this character who's politically minded, has been seeking power. From later conversations, it seems more like he went down that road and realized there's a kind of emptiness to having these things without other things. It's telling that he's not at all impressed by his own status. I have a feeling that maybe this this is one of the best benefits of achieving some kind of really high position or, you know, high financial wealth or something like that. It's like eliminating it quickly. If never having achieved it or never having witnessed people achieve it, never being around people who've achieved it, that might remain your sort of like highest aspiration for a long time. Not to be cliche and downplay anything in life, I think all pursuits can be worth it. You don't want to sour grapes it and shy away from it because you feel like you can't get it. You don't want to hate people who have it. That's not productive. But you probably don't want to make those things your highest aspiration. You know what maybe is important? From recent experience, I'll say one thing I've been thinking about a lot and it's kind of brutal and it does play into the themes of the show a little bit. By far outstripping any material metric in terms of value is time. I don't think there's anybody of advanced age who wouldn't trade just about everything they have for more of more of time, more time. I think the show's answer to that makes in with the best possible answer I can think of is twofold. One is to enjoy the time that you have as much as possible, which I don't think necessarily means you have to buy into that whole like live each day like it's your last. I think long-term considerations are really important. It's more like presence of mind. It's easy to spend a lot of energy, not on all the, the great things that we have now, but on future anxieties and, and imagined problems that may or may not come to, come to exist. And unless there's corresponding action, which often there isn't, your anxiety will do nothing to prevent anyway. Concurrent with that, the second part is trust that your legacy is bigger than you can see. It's not a statue. It's not your name being remembered. It's the ripple effects you will have of the good and bad things that you did. And so do your best accordingly. Dinkin's deep care for the youth, I think also is very telling. It shows an investment in people and their potential, wanting the best for them, wanting to do good, wanting to share, and maybe also just the companionship, you know, like in his later years, wanting connection. So I'm actually filming this episode in two installments. So I went back and watched the first couple minutes of the episode again, which is maybe cheating, but a couple things stuck out to me the second time. One is that Ubel tries to get to know Siri, which maybe is part of her thing. Another is Siri's great delight at the military dude who says magic is a tool for killing. A third is I did not like register at first how insane it is that Siri knew he was drinking tea in another city. Siri's powers is un unrivaled apparently. It's an interesting setup to sort of use this opportunity to subvert Freerun a little bit under Siri's power. This is a very vague statement but I feel like in order for the show's themes to kind of be consistent Freerun will have to surpass Siri in a key way. Speaking of the material my best impression of Siri though I'm starting to think I don't really understand Siri that well perhaps partly because of the fact that she just is an com absolute compulsive liar but what it seems like to me so far is that she is that very material person. And the show is very much not about that. Magic is something meant to be shared, not coveted. It's non-competitive and is probably not countable. Yeah, that tracks. That, that adds so much weight to his treatment of the kids. Oh, wow. What is it for? This is really cool. Oh, wow. No wonder I knew her. I didn't realize it was that deep. I don't know. <laughs> I should say it anyway, though. Even just, you know, she's comfortable who she is. She doesn't really seek the accolades or thanks. She seeks books. <laughs> Good. I'm glad she didn't have to put the books down. She was gonna she was on her way. She was gonna she was there. She may have lifted a finger. Abundantly helpful. Not everyone is Tanjiro. I think he's wearing sort of a mask himself. I disagree. I think I've come up with pretty good evidence for why Yubel is actually a really great person. And that is that she's really somebody that I like. Yeah, I did forget that aspect of the exam a lot. It does explain all of their behavior. Is the reward even real? I mean, Siri, I don't know. Oh. 
Here's like buried directly their legacy, both Denkin and him. But a whole, whole generation, multiple generations of hero party inspired heroes. Yeah, I mean, those things obviously give people hope. Anything that pushes the, the boundaries of awareness, the idea that more things are possible with action, even if the result of that is not in the same field at all, like not everyone in the village has to be a hero, you feel like it has to have been a push towards the positive overall. Just the knowledge that great things are possible. Every little piece of evidence about that. Also about the legacy thing, Himmel is a shining example. He's like the, the ultimate crystallized form of a thing that probably started long before Himmel. We take basic security and, you know, relative abundance for granted, but it's those things that even allow us to think beyond our immediate needs. And those are were created, probably hard fought, you know, entire lives dedicated to it by just an uncountable number of faceless people before us. I'm a big fan, I wanted to meet you. Uh, they really bonded, huh? Does this strike anyone else as bold for an answer free win? Floating is the most mana draining spell. Oh, this is before flying. I don't even think he really believes that. People helping each other. So I can finally be included in this arc. Oh no, specifically. By name. Everyone but her. Fine. Flowers. Maybe wasted potential. Right? Yeah, kind of. That's what I'm saying. I got a bunch of books. Oh, this became a date. Oh. Sark just ruined his own date. What are they- I want to know what they're asking for. All of them. She had a good teacher. It's great that she can say that happily. What do you want? This guy's a bit, of a bit of a renegade. I noticed you noticing me. That's really interesting. I bet that's a source of pain. To be born perfect for the thing that doesn't really exist anymore. Or there's no use for. Oh, this is so random, but I had this thought a long time ago. There's this video circulating of this dude who was really good at like quick drawing a revolver. And I was thinking, wow, he was born in the wrong era. No one really does pistol drawing shootouts anymore. He would have been king of the land. Oh, don't. Dude. This man, this is so, so futile and useless. So we're gonna put the idea in his head maybe. This is so this is not why, man, why? Stark? This is like a lifetime of pent up disappointment. This is kind of psychopathic stuff, like be remembered by any means. Yeah, right. She doesn't like flowers, but that's her whole room. Doesn't like human students, but can't get enough of human students. Doesn't care about Flam, but waxes nostalgic about all of her endeavors. I think what this suggests is that she really wants Freerin to come to the party. All of them as a joke. Seems like a mage trait, you know, they just try not to get attached, but they can't help themselves. This is very, this is, this feels different from Siri. It's a confession. She's starting to feel super lonely. What did you ask for? No questions. This dude? Oh, that's shameful. <laughs> Sorry, continues to be good with the kids. 
<laughs> this guy. You've learned everything I have to teach you. Path of the Warrior is never over. Laundry? Humble. But useful. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it feels like a statement in a way. She wouldn't be. You know what I might actually choose in terms of practical things that would make my life a whole lot better? I might take Bisky's You Don't Need to Sleep Nen spell. God, that would be a game changer. Speaking of having time. I'm sure Freerun genuinely wants the best for them. Oh, she got it from Himmel. I like it. I think it both is and helps you believe. The idea that your bond is good enough that the absence is not a huge deal. It's like if you know you're going to see someone the next day, you don't have a long drawn out goodbye. Well, you can have the same thing, you can have the same feeling, even with an unknown future date. Right, yeah, I get it. It's also this show saying goodbye. Aww. <laughs> Aww, oh. oh, that's heartbreaking, given their long goodbye. Well, I'm not ready for the show to be over. <laughs> Still minor food. I like how they're just traveling together. This is where we get grandkids. A lot of people paired up from that exam. It's good. Not Ubel, though. Off in the world, gallivanting about these streets. The sign thing never had a, a comeback in season one. That's a long, deep setup, I guess. They may meet again, or they may not. Episode 28, it would be embarrassing when we met again. The journey to end continues, some way begins. Like I said, this show really came out of nowhere. It was an experience I was not expecting. Like I had never heard about Free Run, there was no anticipation. But I think they really crushed this season. There obviously was a lot there in the original text, but they really brought it to life. It, just like in every way. I mean, it was really heartfelt. There's a poignancy there that you don't find very often. It's sort of like this fighting of the inevitable. How do you deal with these sort of unstoppable forces that cause pain? How do you live happily and well and beautifully once you no longer can delude yourself about some of the inevitable pains of life separation? It's a tough road to walk for someone like Free Run because there's there's this duality between the beauty and the pain of it. Like the more she looks at other people and what they are and life, the more potent the sense of loss, but then also the more potent the appreciation. The awareness of the things that are going around her, the significance of interactions and daily events in life. I think it was a really important scene and very cool to have Siri kind of break down like that finally. To have the mask come down and this cool elite mage to like actually, not gonna lie, I love my students. I miss them. It's like, yeah, Freeman knows. They're on the same page in that moment. In here is an exploration of things like what matters long term, what matters right now, what is useful materially versus what is useful spiritually. Where do you derive your utility? Where do you derive your joy? What does legacy really mean and what kinds of legacy are actually important? What is a heroic story versus what is actually heroic? There are so many different ways people are coping with these things. This is also a great example of just like a terrible one with that guy who attacked Freerun. Like, I will be remembered at all costs. Doesn't matter what I'm actually doing for the world. Doesn't matter the damage I caused, who I hurt. I cannot handle thoughts of my own death and relative irrelevance in the way I'm looking at the world, which is what I'm guessing is counter to the themes of the show about what kind of legacy actually matters or how it matters. That came from a place of long held, really deep fear and pain. And man, you can just feel his annihilation if you're not fighting back. <laughs> but richness of the themes and characters aside, there's also an incredible attention to detail. And then in the moments where we actually do get action, which like I would be totally fine without, to be honest. But when it happens, it happens in spectacular fashion. It's beautiful. And there's almost always a thematic underpinning to what's going on magically. The magic is a vehicle for exploring life, much like Nen. And there's clearly so much building there that I probably will not realize the entirety of until, you know, the whole thing is complete and maybe not even then. From the duality of magic, from being like an exploration of, I don't know, something like truth or creativity or the world's beauty versus it being used as like a cold, hard resource for winning or for affecting some goal mixed in with the imagination aspect or the visualization aspect, which kind of gives it a much more personal psychological angle. Watching Fear and I always get the sense that the show is screaming at me that there's so much more I'm not seeing. Like I've said, the show kind of is in itself the character of Free Run that's, you know, it's suppressing its mana, but you can sort of feel it. You know something's wrong fighting Free Run, much like I know I'm barely scratching the surface watching the show. I got a little bit caught up in my academic hatred in the latter arc of season one. Upon final reflection, I still do think the exam is weird. It does seem to me that it's not in the best interest of the examinees, but uh, like I feel like I need to see more about Siri, who herself is a very interesting and like duplicitous character, so I want to reserve judgment on that, even if like Free Run, I think her service actions do feel a bit childish. Music is phenomenal. It was just really fun to go on this journey with them. I can't wait to see what other seasons have in store, and I just really hope it doesn't take Free 
reruns lifespan for us to get more of this. A huge thank you to everyone for watching the series, for the discussions, putting up with my angry rants about school, <laughs> like a whole lot of them. As always, thank you to all my patrons for making this series, all series, possible, always. Series after series, it's honestly greater than I can express or really know what to make of. I just watched this episode and I already broke the, the rule about no long goodbyes.